So I almost got shanked during a drug deal. I was 23 at the time and struggling to pay my bills. I was working at IHOP, but needed to find a better job. Luckily, crime is always hiring. So I decided to sell pot. I knew it'd be dangerous, so I came up with a list of six rules to try to minimize the risk. Rule number one, do not get high on your own supply. Pretty self-explanatory. On top of losing profit, drugs make you paranoid. And I can't be having panic attacks every time someone knocks on the door. Who is it? Uh, Domino's? You think I'm stupid, don't you? Rule number two, buy and sell the largest quantity possible. When drug dealing, every transaction's a risk. At any point, someone can rob you or narc on you. So in order to minimize the risk, I'd basically sell it wholesale, where I'd pick up a pound and try to sell in either quops or ounces. To me, anyone buying less than an ounce was a crackhead, and you never sell to crackheads. Rule number three, only use Mylar bags. I don't know how effective it'd be versus a dog, but it definitely made it way more difficult to detect. Besides, if Scooby is searching your place for drugs, then the cops have already solved that mystery. Rule number four, do not tell anyone one that doesn't need to know. Bragging gets you caught. You're basically giving people blackmail on yourself. And I don't want to be giving out hand jobs every single time someone dials nine and one. Rule number five, only keep what I needed on me. I'd only have a few ounces in my place at the time, and the rest I hid in the woods about 12 minutes away from me. Plus any other paraphernalia I just hide around my house. That way I could be like, nah, that, that scale is for meal prepping, officer. Really? Then what are these? Food storage? And this? Oregano? And what about this? Uh, flower vase? Rule number six, know when to stop. As a guy, you always gotta know when to pull out. Think of it like raw dogging farm animals. You might get away with it for a while but eventually you're gonna get caught by a pig. So those are my rules and I felt pretty good about them, but the one thing I always hated was picking up the weed, because I didn't know any reliable people. So I had to go through like a friend of a friend, which was not ideal because when you're buying a few thousand dollars worth of drugs, things can go south pretty quick. One kid who I knew had connections was a guy at my job named Billy. Now Billy uh, was kind of a f up. He had two kids, came to work high all the time, and had no aspirations of getting a better job. I liked talking to him, but it was clear from the get-go he was not a reliable person. But again, I'm desperate. So I asked if he knows anyone that can hook me up with a pound. He says, oh, I, I I got a guy. I'm like, do you trust him? He's like, oh yeah, he's legit. Spoiler alert, he wasn't fucking legit. Initially, the guy wanted to meet me under an overpass at 2 a.m. I'm like, yeah, no, let, let's meet up in the daytime instead. Because if you're going to do something illegal, you should do it in the least suspicious way possible. Two cars under an overpass at 2 a.m. screams either drug deal or I'm paying someone to blow me. Either way, I'm not getting violated with no witnesses. So I say, uh, how about we meet up behind the 7-Eleven in town at 3 p.m.? And he agrees. Now, I chose this spot specifically because it's at the bottom of the hill and there's a McDonald's at the top of the hill. Basically, give me a chance to scope him out before he arrives. So I arrive at the McDonald's 45 minutes early, park my car facing the 7-Eleven, and wait. When he arrives, I take out my binoculars, write down his license plate, and text one of my friends, hey man, I'm meeting with this guy with license plate, do 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 call me in 15 minutes. Then I take the money for the weed and put it in my shoe. I drive down to the back of the 7-Eleven, park like three spaces over from him. We both get out of our cars, and immediately, I start to get sketched out. He was shaking and looking all around him in the, you know, I just smoked meth kind of way. I say, uh, hey, you got it on you? He says, show me the money. I'm like, relax man, I, I got the money in my car. Do you have the stuff? He then starts to come closer to me, shaking, and I could tell this was way too sketchy. So I say, uh, li listen, I'll come back. And before I knew it, he pulls out a knife. I immediately froze and put my hands up. I was like, uh, you don't want to do this, man. He says, G give me the money. I say, listen, I, I just texted my friend your personal information. He says, what? I said, I, I thought you might try this, so I texted my friend your license plate number. My phone is right here in my pocket. If you just let me take it out, I can show you. He says, uh, just give me the money, man. I say, dude, I if you shank me, the police will know immediately who did it. Just let me take out my phone and I'll show you. He hesitates for a moment then does a little go-ahead gesture with the knife. So I take out my phone, and as I do, I take a step back, giving myself at least a chance if he decides to lunge at me. Now, my phone had one of those swipe patterns to unlock. I did it twice and f***ed it up both times. Each time I messed it up, a spike of adrenaline went through my body. I don't even remember how many chances you get before it locks you out, but there's a chance it's three. So I, like, hyper-focus and unlock it. I show it to him, and I'm like, your license plate is L-A-R-B-R-H, right? He says, just, just give me the money. I say, dude, just go get the weed. I need a supplier, and we can make way more money if we just did this a few times. Besides, I didn't bring the money on me thinking you pull some shit like this. So just go get the weed so we can keep making money. At this point, I can tell he's debating. I'm like, dude, just go get the weed and I'll get you the money. He hesitates for a moment, then bolts back to his car. I hustle back to my car, looking in his general direction, thinking he might be getting a gun, which in retrospect doesn't make any sense because why wouldn't he just pull out a gun in the first place? Luckily, he doesn't come back and I hear him turn on his car. He then backs out super quickly and as he turns around, the front of his car scrapes against the building. He speeds away and I just remember grasping my steering wheel saying, oh my God. I'm breathing in and out, trying to get my adrenaline down, and then the weirdest thing happened. I just began to laugh. I just sat in my car and was hysterically laughing at myself. I don't know if it was a self-defense mechanism or what, but I just found the situation so funny for some reason. Anyway, I left and told my buddy what happened. He immediately distanced himself from the guy being like, oh, I knew he was a piece of shit. I'm like, dude, if you knew he was a piece of shit, why would you have me meet him? But you know what? It didn't matter, because at least I escaped unharmed. So that was how I talked myself out of being stabbed. Moral of the story is, don't sell drugs. And if you do, plan ahead. Mm, you know what you want to do? Oh, you want to push that subscribe button. Oh, push the button. Push the button.